Over the next couple weeks, I'm going to be putting out a complete beginner's guide on how to play Eternal Return. This video, we're going to start out with the tutorials of the game and breaking them down into specific sections. This will be as if you've never touched the game before, and by the end of the series, you'll hopefully be able to hit your rank goals. Make sure you check out my community tab here on YouTube for individual breakdowns about each section. What's poppin' everyone, it's your boy Levi, and this is the first thing you should do after downloading Eternal Return, and that's check out the tutorial. However, you're not going to follow it exactly. The tutorial for Eternal Return is notoriously bad, and often has you doing things that you shouldn't normally do in a real game. Don't worry, I'm going to follow along with you and point out the things you should do and things to avoid. The first tutorial explains crafting and fighting. You also get some lore here about the island, which hopefully will have some voice acting in the future. When entering Lumia Island, you'll be prompted with the key bindings. Ignore my key bindings, I remapped all of mine. The character the tutorial gives us is Yuki. So this tutorial doesn't explain the HUD, but I think that's the best place to start. At the very top of the screen, you have the zone that you're in. There are 17 zones in Lumia Island. The timer at the top is the day-night cycle timer. You start on day one morning, then day one night, and so on. Different events happen on different day cycles. Under the timer is your detonation timer, also known as your red zone timer. This timer is unique to each player and ticks down for every second that you're in a restricted zone. I'll explain what a restricted zone is later in the series. The number next to the gray avatar symbol is the player count. Typically, a lobby has 18 players, including yourself. However, if there aren't enough players queuing, the lobby will start as low as 15. Below that is your character profile picture and battle zone kit. You spawn in every game with a battle zone kit, which lets you revive if you partake in a battle zone and lose. Once again, more about this later. The first tab in the top right is your credits. Credits allow a player to order items starting after a minute and 5 seconds into game. This is because there's a 5 second countdown to get into game, so it's really a minute. Item price scales as the game goes on. Next to the credits is the game timer. This does not coordinate with the day-night cycle, and simply shows how much time has elapsed in the current game. Next to the timer is your stats, in order of team kills, kills, assists, and hunts. If you're playing duos or squads, team kills are how many kills your team has gotten as a whole. Kills are just how many kills you have specifically lasted. These will show the same number in solo modes. Assists are what you get in team modes if you're the person that doesn't get the last hit. Hunts are how many animals you have slain throughout the game. The three icons next to this information are display, camera toggle, and settings respectively. Below this is your save plan. Each game before it starts, you will select a save plan for your build you want to run. Think of it as a preset template, as items in your save plan do not mean you have the item in game. This will show you the completed items to build and each component so that you don't have to memorize all six recipes. Every character has a weapon, chest, head, arm, shoe, and accessory slot. I'm not sure why that they're in this order for the tutorial. Go with the order that I said them in. Only some of these items are good for Yuki too. Don't follow this build. Below the build, you'll find the credits icon again. This will show what the current price is to order an item. Now let's move to the bottom bar. Your stats are in the far left panel. Hover over each one for an explanation. Next is your portrait and level. Your level is made up of your mastery. Next to that is the rest and mastery icons. As said, mastery is what makes up your level, and there are different kinds of mastery. Each mastery gives a different stat and can be raised by doing specific actions. I'll go into more detail in the mastery section. When you're low on health, or SP, Eternal Returns version of mana, you can click the rest button to heal it back. Mine is on B, but I'm not sure if that's the default key. Below, this is your equipment slot. This is where your completed build will start to show up. In the middle of your bar are your skills. If you've played any type of MOVA, it's all the same. You get three skills, an ultimate, and a passive. Any current effects on your character will appear above your skills. Unique to Eternal Return is that each character has a weapon skill, which can be found here. Each character wields a type of weapon, and based on that weapon, it becomes a different skill. Each character has one to four weapon types and can't wield a weapon out of its range. Lastly is your inventory. This is where you'll hold items, food, drink, cameras, and traps that you collect on the island. You have 10 slots to work with. At the end of the slots is the craft menu. Mine is on X. I don't know why it says B here. Clicking this will open the items catalog where you can see all the craftable items in Return on Return. This is very intimidating, and I promise you won't need to make anywhere near this amount of items per game. If you look at your character, you will have your player name, your health bar, your SP bar, your level, and some other symbols. The symbol that's next to your level is your augment. Before each game, and usually implemented into your build, you will have to select an augment. Each character benefits differently from different augments. Above the augment is your weapon mastery. Think of this as a player combat strength. It's different from your character level, and it will paint a better picture of if you can take a fight with someone or not. 
These four stars under the SP gauge are unique to Yuki and are his passive ability. Character's specific traits will appear under the SP bar. If you're playing a character that uses pistol, assault rifle, or sniper rifle, you will have ammo that appears here. The bottom right corner is the minimap. It can be expanded with a keybind. Mine is on T, but I think the default is M. This will show you the 17 other zones in Lumia Island. Above the map is the crafting guide. This indicates what and how many items from your build you can find in the current zone that you're in. This way you don't have to guess. Below zone items are harvesting and hunting items. Harvesting and hunting items are leather, rocks, branches, and water. Leather can always be found on chickens, dogs, wolves, and bears. And 25% of the time you can find them on bats at the time of making this video. Rocks and branches can be found on the ground in every zone. And water can be found in very specific zones. Items that you need are marked with a yellow triangle inside loot boxes. Now that we know everything on the screen, let's jump into the tutorial. The first portion of every single game you play will be the looting and crafting phase. Anything with a box icon means it can be looted. If you don't see a box icon, it can be toggled with F8. A group of boxes in one area is called a loot cluster or loot distribution. Each zone or area has its own loot distribution with items. You'll want to loot these boxes to get items for your build. Items you need will be indicated with the same yellow triangle as before. If this hand symbol is in the top right of the loot box and it turns yellow, it means you have auto loot on. This is a good setting for new players. It means that after a few seconds, it will try to auto loot the required items from this zone if your inventory has enough space. It's faster just to click them though. Finally, make sure you grab the loot boxes in an order that makes sense to the direction that you're walking. It'll help save time. Items that can be equipped will auto equip to your equipment slot if it's currently empty. Don't worry, you don't have to remove them to craft. When you have two items that can be crafted, a hammer and wrench will appear, showing the items that they can make together. You can only benefit from the stats that an item gives if it's in your equipment slot not your inventory. If you hover over the crafted item, a white border will flash over the components, showing which ones it needs to make the item. Similar to looting items, you only want to craft items with a yellow triangle. Be careful if you craft something without it. It means you crafted an item that wasn't in your build originally, and you'll have to spend some time looting the components again. Depending on the rarity of the item, it will take some time to craft. Item components are white. Crafted items are green and blue. Completed items are purple and transition items are gold. Wild animals will appear on Lumia Island. The tutorial here has you fight a dog with an uncompleted weapon. Do not do this. Make your weapon to completion first. Remember, it should be purple before you kill any wild animal. You should always aim for chickens if you can. The exception to this is that some weapons need a leather to be completed. Yuki doesn't need a leather for this current weapon that they have selected for me, so I'm not sure why it's making me do this. You can attack things with right click. This is called a basic attack or an auto attack. Some characters attack primarily through basic attack, while some characters primarily through spells. Some do a mix of both. I'll go more into it when I talk about damage types. As you can see, there was a leather on the dog. There was also a VF blood, which is a rare resource. Rare resources are used to make transition items. These are upgrades once you complete your build. It is impossible to find blood on a dog in a real game. Not sure why it's possible in this tutorial. Bears are the strongest animal on Lumia Island, and have a chance of having rare resources on them, which includes blood, so I don't know why they put it on the dog and not on the bear. While you can kill chickens, dogs, boars, bats, and maybe wolves without your weapon, it will just be a waste of time. Bears are a different story. They will most likely kill you if you don't have your weapon. If you're a new player, at minimum you need your weapon before taking any hunt. If you need to drop an item out of your inventory, you can control right click or just drag it out. The tutorial then engages you in combat against an opponent, but of course this is an AI bot. Once again, you typically want to have your full build before fighting another player. You should typically have your full build at the start of night 1, but partially through night 1 at its latest. Fighting a player without your build is a huge waste of time, just don't bother. After you slay an opponent, you can loot them like you would a box for any items that you might need or food. As you can see, there's a red X over the weapon on this opponent. This is because Magnus, the opponent, is a bat user, and Yuki cannot use a bat. You can loot any dead body on the ground, it doesn't have to be a player that you specifically killed. The game is then going to tell you that you can see alerts on your map when players are looting, crafting, or fighting. This isn't true anymore in the current state of Eternal Return. You can see when they're looting or crafting, yes, but you can only see pings of players fighting animals specifically. You can no longer see when players are fighting other players. Once again, we shouldn't be fighting here yet, but we have to find and kill all the other opponents, so do so. When you've done that and won the game, click the exit button in the bottom right corner. For completing the tutorial, you will get the character Yuki, who you just played. He's a decent beginner character and uses two-handed sword or dual swords for weapons. 
This was part one of my complete new player's guide to eternal return. This is going to be an ongoing series that I'm going to try and make as digestible as possible. I know it's a lot at the start, but once you learn the core concepts of the game, it starts to make a lot more sense. This is probably as dry as the game gets, so it's only fun from here on out. Be sure to click the card above the full playlist. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.